In this video, I'm going to showcase a small seven minute segment of a live webinar I did today where I was showing some new improvements, very exciting new improvements to the QuickBooks Online Bang Feeds workflow. So I hope you enjoy this. So let's talk about some quick news on QuickBooks Online improvements inside, inside Bang Feeds. And there's basically three major changes or up updates really um, in Bank Feeds. One is they remove the automatic suggestion of transfers as a default transaction type. That should have tons of people on their feed, high-fiving, standing ovation, uh, shaking the champagne bottle, popping bottles. I know right now, like, this is huge, right? So QuickBooks, again, not suggesting transfers as a default transaction type is huge, especially for us power users that had to do so much cleaning on this. Second, uh, sort of stemming from the same uh, idea, is uh, QuickBooks is significantly reducing, if not at some point completely eliminate, even suggesting on categorized asset as one of as the uh, default account categories. It goes hand in hand um, because uh, when, when it suggested transfers, it needed to suggest some sort of asset account and it was suggesting on categorized assets. So now you're going to see significantly reduce the amount of on categorized asset suggestions that QuickBooks will give, even without a transfer, um, you'll still get rid of that. And the last one is they actually added, and this is gonna be a very sort of silent little feature they added. They added a batch edit post bank feed categorization inside the categorized page that allows you to change payee, class, or location in, in batch from this screen, even across multiple bank accounts. So notice that we have these transaction names that say the word transfer, payment, deposit, credit, payment, cash advance, transfer. Typically, when QuickBooks Online was used to seeing words like that inside banking, it would actually suggest uh, the record a transfer default transaction. It's not there anymore. It actually starts with categorize. The other interesting thing is that sometimes, especially because of this change, QuickBooks doesn't even know what to suggest. And they're gonna, you're gonna see some instances where QuickBooks will suggest nothing. And obviously, that, in some cases for accounting professionals, we, we, we wish that was the case across the board, but it would just never suggest anything. That would be amazing, actually. Um, but uh, you're gonna see this very strange thing where sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't do that. So this includes Zelle, Venmo, all these PayPal transfer, all these transactions that, uh, that, that have that. Now, this nothing category suggestion is actually a glitch. Um, I was talking to some of the programmers and I said, hey, why does it not show up with some and not for others? And this is sort of some of the, some of the leftovers from the, from the removing, removing the, uh, the transfer suggestion that QuickBooks hasn't figured out like how to take these things that used to be suggested as a transfer and suggest something. Um, so that's interesting. We're going to see how, how that comes about. Maybe they'll leave those random blanks in there or maybe they'll replace it with something else. So that's pretty interesting. As, as you can see, uh, on categorized asset is not being suggested anywhere here. So that's awesome. Um, and then the other thing is, and, and, and this is going to be one of the very, very silent, not well-known features just because the way it's put together. Inside categorized, Actually, you can, once the transactions have been categorized, if you know you categorize something wrong or you need to uh, correct, all you have to do is select the several transactions that you want to change. And now they have added an edit button right there. And this edit button works the same way the reclassify uh, screen uh, works, where it lets you reclassify either the payee, the account, the class, or the location for multiple transactions at once. So if you miss something in bank feeds and then you wanna go back and fix it, you can do that. Unfortunately, and this is some direct feedback I had given them, is if I don't have a separate column that tells me what vendor I used in the first place or what class I used in the first place or what location I used in the first place, it's not really that useful um, because I, I would have to remember what I used. Right now, the only real information you get is inside this column that says added or matched where it tells you which account you use. So it's kind of semi-useful. And unfortunately, because the payee name, class, and location is not part of the information that's displayed, we kinda, we couldn't magically fix it with right tools. So we actually, 
I told the the Intuit people that hey, if this is good, if you want to make this really truly useful, display this information there, or maybe add it to the filters. You know, if you add it to the filters, then maybe this uh, on on the fly categorization under the category screen could be useful. But the other really neat thing that they added is like right now at the moment, I'm looking at my Chase 406 account. Um, I can actually, and again, very hidden, very, uh, a feature that just like most people are not going to discover, which you know I, I was told about it and that's how I found it, is if you click on this little drop down menu for the accounts, there's now an option all the way in the bottom that says all accounts. Again, very hidden, not many people are going to find this. So all the way in the bottom, all accounts. And this is only, again, only when you're inside categorized. If you're back in for your review, you're not going to see that. But when you select this all accounts option uh, inside categorized, now what you get to see is the history of all the transactions across all bank accounts, across all credit cards. And now you see a new column that tells you which, which is the source account that it came from. So again, you know, maybe contextually based on what the source account is, maybe you can uh, choose what you're going to categorize. Unfortunately, the account column is not sortable yet. Also, feedback I've given to the Intuit folks. Uh, but that's a huge thing. That's awesome. Like, so now I can look at transactions I categorize across the board. So if I wanted to categorize all these 7-Elevens and basically spanning across, you know, two Amexes, two different Chase credit cards is a great example. I can come back in here, go to edit and then choose you know, 7-Eleven, whichever my 7-Eleven uh, vendor is, and then put this in gas expense or whatever it happens to be. So I can do this across multiple already reconciled transactions in bank feeds from the bank feed screen. Of course, this is, you know, very similar to using the reclassified transactions that's already available to accountants, but it has that, you know, different dimension where I'm doing it right from bank feed. And maybe, maybe it saves us some time um, not sure. Like I, I, I still, I'm yet to see it. They literally just released this, I believe, last night. So I know this video is a little bit more advanced than the usual sort of basic how-to videos on how to do things in QuickBooks Online. So this is a little treat for those uh, power users that have been using QuickBooks for a long time. And I hope that you get to actually use the specific features. And I would love to know in the comments, uh, are you using them? Is it working for you? Uh, you know, is this, a, is this a net positive improvement? Is it helping your workflow? I would love to know that because I've actually been giving direct feedback to the QuickBooks uh, product managers working on bank feeds for the last six months. And I'm just very excited to start actually start seeing some progress from the sort of direct feedback that I've been giving them. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.